Hello, my name is Reed Omery. I'm the Chair of Radiology at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Today I'd like to begin by introducing you to Hector. Hector is a 44-year-old bricklayer. About a month ago on the job site, he fell, twisted, and fractured his ankle. He was casted in the emergency room and asked to follow up with his physician in one month. So Hector took this Wednesday morning off from work and came to see his physician. He was quite frustrated having to wait two and a half hours in the waiting room. He then went and met his physician only to learn that the physician could not offer him the treatment that he so desired. It turns out that he needed an x-ray of his ankle and that was never ordered. And Hector was quite frustrated. How could he be asked to be seen his physician if he hadn't had the x-ray? That just made no sense to him. If you think about it, while this is a story regarding Hector, I think we've all shared similar experiences, either directly ourselves or when attending waiting rooms with our family members. We can be really frustrated with the wait, with the lack of service or a lack of updating. Uh, so it, it is really a universal experience uh, that we all have had. So the experience that we have is related to the outcomes of our care. It's related to the emotions and also to the perceptions that we have of their surroundings. So patient care really is the process of designing experiences around patient care. And imagine if we could improve the care of our patients through designing improved experiences. Well, it turns out there is a way to help us identify and create better experiences for our patients. Those set of tools, the way of constructing and defining experiences is called design thinking. And design thinking was launched in Silicon Valley a couple decades ago. And it's a really a process of tools and a mindset to try and understand what problems are human in nature and how we might solve those problems. Design itself is the intention behind an outcome. So if we apply design thinking, really what we're trying to do is use the concepts of design to improve the experience of the users. And in this case, the users are our patients. The foundation of design thinking is based upon empathy. We really need to place ourselves in the shoes of our patients. In this case, Hector's shoes. And once we do that, we can really begin to understand the needs and then we can try to shape the experiences to address those needs. The process of design thinking involves five stages. The foundation, as I had mentioned, was empathy. And once we have empathy, we then can try to define what the need, what problem we need to solve. And then we can assemble a team. Uh, the more diverse the team members, the better the ideas. This team comes together and brainstorms a whole set of possible solutions. The team then also decides what to prototype and then they test the prototype. The prototype is just the first pilot solution. And then the process begins over again. We take those solutions, we test them, we learn from them, and we go through the design thinking process again. Failure is encouraged in design thinking, and in fact, it's truly essential to success. So we need to be comfortable with our pilots, our prototypes not working, and we don't view failure as an outcome, we view failure as a learning opportunity. While we discuss the experience that Hector had as one possibility uh, to apply design thinking, there are so many other problems that we can address using a similar process. For instance, we can ask, how do we improve the 
learning experience of medical students on a particular rotation? Or how do we improve the communication between health providers and patients? There are so many problems in healthcare that could be solved using the concepts and the process of design thinking. So design thinking is something that we all can embrace. It's a mindset. I invite all of you to consider helping radiology design a better world through using design thinking. Thank you.